<laughs> Guys, dude, the GameStop thing just keeps on getting crazier and crazier this week. And the internet is full of people that have no idea what they're talking about. Mainstream media is lying through their teeth. I'm gonna fill you in on what's actually going on as someone who has been here the whole time. Because first off, it's running so hard right now that it halted again. And they're actually saber rattling as though Roaring Kitty is manipulating the market and causing this price run. Bro, the whole reason why we are all pissed is because we don't affect the price at all. Our trades don't even go to the market. Just the institutions push it all around with their big money while they put our orders away into dark pools that don't actually affect the prices. The whole thing is rigged. And if you don't believe me, here is the head of the SEC telling you that. When you place a market order in the US, a market order, a retail platform, well over 90% of those trades go straight to the dark market, to a wholesaler that bought that order flow rather than competing trade by trade. Look at that face right there. That's the face of what the fuck did you just say? So right there, Gary Gensler has just debunked all of the mainstream narrative about what's happening this last month with GameStop. Really, it debunked the entire narrative for the last three years that this is a meme stock caused by our sentiment, caused by us trading it. No, no, it's not. The term meme stock was invented by the financial media in order to teach you to not pay attention to this because our trades don't affect the price. The only thing our trades do is they trap the short sellers that were manipulating the price into a really bad situation and they had to move all of their shorts into crazy weird derivatives to hide the short interest. And when you put all your shorts, like lots of them, like way more than number of shares that exist, when you hide them in derivatives and swaps, suddenly the price gets really fucking weird. Meme stocks aren't because meme investors are a like affecting the market. We don't affect the market. Meme stocks are because crime is happening behind the scenes and that is making the price do crazy fucking things. And we've had them trapped in their criminal wiggling for so long that something is breaking. So the next narrative they're pushing out is that E-Trade, his brokerage, is gonna kick him off their platform for posting his position? as though it's illegal to talk about the stocks that you like and to post memes and positions? Isn't the whole point of what the SEC is trying to do to increase transparency in the markets? Like, isn't the whole job of the financial media to tell you what to buy and sell so that the market makers, the institutions, can use you as entrance and exit liquidity and take your money? Don't believe me? Here's our buddy Jim doing that over and over. Jim Cramer's worst picks of all time. I gotta say right up front, when our research team started really looking into this, got downright impressive. Jim Cramer said the Tesla IPO was not a smart investment. But after it comes public, listen, Tesla's a sell, sell, sell. You don't wanna own this stock. You don't wanna lease it. Heck, you, don't even, you shouldn't even rent the darn thing. I'm not kidding, he really said that. Sounds more like a meme coin pump and dump than a nationally broadcast financial opinion show. Now nothing lasts forever, including the Marcus Love Affair with Magnificent Seven. But the bottom line, until we turn the corner in the pandemic, the earnings themselves are simply an abstraction for these thesis stocks. And any disappointment is simply one more reason to buy them. Seven stocks he picked were Netflix, Roku, Tesla, Peloton, Square, PayPal, and Zoom. And since Jim gave them his blessing, the Kramer curse has crushed almost all of them. Netflix down 60%, Roku 70%, Peloton 80%. PayPal and Zoom, 65%. Interestingly, Square rebranded to the block, perhaps trying to avoid the curse of the Kramer, but despite their best efforts, they're still down 60%. The only one of the Magnificent Seven that is up is Tesla. But Jim covered himself on that one too by saying on January 3rd of this year that Tesla is not a buy, right before the stock pumped nearly 70%. But don't worry, all the institutions that are telling Kramer what to say had already made their plays and were ready for the stock price to go down because they needed you to buy it so they could sell it to you and make money. Think about it. The media's job is to lie in every aspect. And in the financial media, that is the most important media to control because it's all about money. And the whole point of mainstream financial media is to mislead the public so that the wealthy that own the publications can get wealthier at your expense. And that brings us to the best part. Everyone was like trying to cast doubts like Roaring Kitty sold his account. It's not really him. It's some fake. It's like, okay, bro, trust me. We know it's not. But 
Now, you can all see that it's not, because he just posted a live stream scheduled for tomorrow. And now you can watch it for yourself. You can tune in and see what Keith thinks of everything. You can come hang out with all of us in the comments and shoot the shit. And you don't even have to wait till tomorrow because people are already blowing up the live chat, having a great time. Check this out. They're going crazy in here and it's on slow mode. These motherfuckers are in here 22 hours early, having a fucking party. It's on slow mode. One comment every two Let's minutes. Go. So yeah, I'm, I'm just here to tell you that if you're on the team that is not Roaring Kitty right now, you're on the wrong team. This has always been regular people against the big banks and the big institutions, and they have done everything they possibly can to try to trick you into thinking otherwise. Keith is not pumping and dumping. He's not here just to get rich. He's not here to sell on you. He's just here to post memes and have a great time and laugh at how fucked up all of this is. And whatever else he's here to do, he'll probably let you know tomorrow. So, this is your daily reminder to not trust anything the media says, to not trust any influencer who has an outside take who has clearly not been here for years, because they have no idea what they're talking about. The details are extremely complex, and you'd have had to be here for three years watching, researching, learning in order to understand it. But the play is actually really simple. A bunch of greedy motherfuckers shorted a company that they were sure they were going to bankrupt. And they shorted it so much that they had no way to exit their position without blowing themselves up. We caught them. We bought the stock. We held the stock. And they couldn't get out. They tried to trick you. They tried to pretend like they did get out. But all they did was hide their positions in weird complex derivatives and swaps. And those swaps have been making meme stocks go crazy for the last three years. Oh, and by the way, during those last three years, this guy came along and turned the company around. It is now profitable. It has no debt. They have $2 billion of cash in the bank. They're not going anywhere. We've been watching, we've been learning, and we're still holding. There's only one way for them to get out of their trade, and that's to close their shorts. The only problem is they have to buy our shares from us in order to do it. And we're not selling, cause this is a lot of fun. Time to wake up, bitch, get up. Get up, get up. Get up.